David. Well, about a million folks in manufacturing have lost their jobs to robots over the past decade. That's awful news, of course, for the unemployed. But it does mean that investors should consider which companies have done best at capitalizing on the robotics trend. InvestorPlace.com editor Jeff Reeves has been doing just that. He joins us now with details. First of all, Jeff, what's happened to all those folks who've lost their jobs? Are they ever going to get a job back in manufacturing? Well, probably not. I mean, actually, some of the manufacturing jobs now are very high tech, thanks to the robots you talked about. But some of these old people with, you know, we, we kind of pejority of call them low skilled jobs, they're just not done uh, the same way anymore. And so a lot of these people have either aged out of the workforce or on disability, or they're working jobs that are either part time or just not the same pay. So the sad reality is the, the 1.6 million manufacturing jobs that are lost, if you actually look at the details, about a million jobs have been, have been added in service industries like, like yeah. retail and, and working in restaurants. So the sad reality is people just aren't working in factories anymore. They're working down the street like at the local restaurant. All right. Well, the folks who are in robotics, who are taking some of these manufacturing jobs, are doing extremely well. Let's start with the biggest name out there, IBM. Uh, and talk about Watson, if you can. Yeah, everybody knows uh, Watson from the from the Jeopardy days, uh, but it's much more than fun and games for them. Like people just asking, you know, who was the child actor who said uh, on on the old Life Serial commercials, uh, "Mikey, do I like it?" Like it's it's funny that Watson knows that, but it actually knows a lot more. It can diagnose disease if you put in symptoms in there for uh, like vital signs for patients at hospitals. It can research diseases and tell you what the symptoms are pointing towards. It, it does uh, personalized lessons plan lesson plans for teachers based on test scores and what kids are good or bad at. So these have real world applications. They have real world applications for you and me too, Dave, because there's actually financial services companies that well, use Watson to, to assess risk. And, you know, it's nice for me that I get to go on Yahoo Finance and hunt around all day for some of this data, but Watson can do it much faster. So there's a, there's a fine line right now between all the data we have and the humans who like kind of process that. And Watson is kind of at the forefront of that. I think IBM is doing a great job of thinking around the corner and how to use that information intelligently. Switching to Google. Google has something called DeepMind. Explain. Yeah, Google is the kind of the same way that, I mean, their algorithms right now, just they, they, they search for LOL cats or whatever people search for on the web. But DeepMind is a company they bought for $400 million last year that actually learns from the information. It doesn't, doesn't just connect the search with results. It actually thinks about things. But DeepMind isn't the only robotics company that Google has bought. It's bought a robotics arm company. It's bought a humanoid robot company called... Um, well, I forget the name, but it won a Defense Department competition for working in disaster areas where it's unsafe for humans to go. So hmm. Google's got a long history of successful acquisitions, either YouTube or Android. So right. they're really thinking ahead. And if you believe that robots are the future, that, then Google is definitely where it's at with $60 billion in these recent acquisitions to help them out. Well, Amazon's spending money here, too. They bought a company for about $770 million called Kiva. That's a robotics firm, right? Yeah, they bought that company in 2012, and it's not unrealistic to think that about 10 years from now, there could be no human beings involved in an Amazon transaction. So I go to Amazon, I click order these Kiva robots that work on fulfillment and warehouse processing, pull the stuff off the shelves, they put them in those wonderful little drones that Jeff Bezos unveiled to us on 60 Minutes, right. and the drone delivers it to my doorstep. There really could be no humans involved in that process. Okay, so now, there's a long way between here and there, but oh, you know, it's a, it's a possibility. A lot of our investors are looking overseas, in particular to Germany, Siemens, of course, big German company. They've spent about $5 billion a year on every year on uh, robotics as well. So you could go there. Yeah, and it's important to realize, too, that they do developed stuff, like uh, they do uh, either auto manufacturers who, build, uh, who use automation to build cars or bottling plants for Coke and Pepsi, but they also do emerging markets. And if, if you right. think about it, the manufacturing jobs we kind of got disrupted out of in the 70s and 80s, that can happen in emerging markets, too, as labor costs start to go up. So Siemens is a really good global, powerful robotics play if you want to play that trend at and home and abroad. real quick, Jeff, there is a robotics ETF, I guess, aptly it's called Robo, right? Yeah, and I mean, we don't know where things are going to go, right? It's 2014. I thought I'd have a flying car by now. It's, it just didn't happen. So if you don't know which company is going to succeed, you can play a broad one in the Robo ETF. It's got some loans we named here, okay. along with 3D printers. They have John Deere, which automates agriculture. Any way you can slice automation, Robo's a way to play it. We got a lot in there. Jeff Reeves, great stuff, my friend. Thank you very much.